Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, today we have an interview series with uh, Krishna Sangi sir, and he is uh, Chief Investment Officer, Equity at uh, Mahindra Manu Life Mutual Fund. Thank you, sir, uh, for joining uh, for this interview. And uh, we are uh, we'd like to uh, take your experience and learn uh, how to invest, how to save, and uh, money expects from you. So thank you, and uh, thanks for your time. Welcome, sir. Yeah. So thanks, Nikhil. Uh, thanks for you know giving us the opportunity to be with you and with all your you know uh, all your clients with the aspiration of creating wealth through markets. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Uh, your experience is like you have uh, worked with uh, uh, multiple organizations and you worked with the uh, insurance company also to manage their fund. Uh, could you please uh, take us through this experience uh, and what did you learn and what is your uh, learning about money that Will be a starting point where we can start our discussion sure so so sure i mean and honestly the, the biggest learning about money is to be careful with money uh, especially when it's other people's money uh, so i started with being a lender in the sense that early part of my career i was part of a credit lending team four five years i spent time there then i moved into fixed income fund management for maybe four five years and after that uh, I moved into equity fund management Then within equity fund management, I have done actually stints in both life insurance and mutual fund combinations. So broadly, you know, uh, been there. Luckily, the market is the same. Investor expectations are same, but the organization or the business model for insurance versus mutual fund, some are far more long term, some are relatively less, but uh, that, that brought the experience you know, across markets. Okay, okay, thank you. And when, when it comes to uh, managing a uh, fund from uh, life insurance and uh, mutual fund companies, uh, is there any difference? And what uh, what's your uh, thought around? Uh, you know, uh, how do you manage differently? Yeah, you know, honestly, uh, in a way, there is no difference because it's same asset, same market, same stock price, same company. Uh, where it differs is the is the client profile. Uh, when we manage insurance money, uh, there is a reasonable comfort that this customer money is going to be with us for 5, 10, 15, 20 years, depending on the vintage. In mutual fund, it is slightly different. Uh, as long as we keep on doing well, money is there with us. There's no, no debate. Uh, but uh, on an average, one believes that uh, average age of a client in insurance will be longer than in mutual fund. So that's the difference on the liability side. But if you look only from a market experience, it's same. Uh, both have NAVs, both have... Uh, need to do well vis-a-vis -vis benchmark and vis-a-vis -vis peers. So I, nothing changes there. Uh, okay, okay, very good. And you know, these, these days there are a lot of people are entering into trading, and uh, and a lot of you know people like us in YouTube, uh, we are coming and talking about money and uh, investing. So that uh, aspiration is kind of a building in everyone uh, from graduation, uh, when even people who are working in a job, they think that as a side business they can do this and. Uh, uh, create uh, income and uh, wealth uh, by doing the trading by themselves. Uh, so, what's your take on uh, you know investing uh, by themselves uh, with a very minimal uh, in, you know uh, research and uh, maybe taking tips from outside and investing it? You know, clearly uh, you very well defined the question. You know, there is a thing called investing. There is a thing called trading, and as long as you know one is clear not to intermingle the two. Uh, I think both are nice thing. Uh, trading is something where you are really there only for possibly a thrill of making short term money. That short term in our market can be as little as maybe you know, five minutes because markets allow you a chance to get out. I think invest is something clearly for wealth creation. And you know, if, if you really want to uh, put uh, a little bit of English into it, you know, invest as in, you know, INVST is far better than invest, which is WASD, you know. So I'll, I'll basically say, yes, uh, let's invest money uh, for the purpose of wealth creation. Uh, trading, honestly, is something left to uh, people who are extremely indulging into that, you know, short-term thrills. Maybe there is uh, uh, one out of 100 people who got it right as per SEBI data also. And honestly, those data are broadly valid. Uh, so to an extent, uh, Investing is very different from trading and all those people who are getting into trading, my only suggestion is be aware of the odds and odds are very well known uh, even from regulatory reports. People know uh, how many times you know one gets it right versus wrong. Uh, investing is different because your time frame is genuinely allowing the companies to grow. I mean, you're not even able to you know, even get a fruit or a 
or a flower out in one day on a plant right it has its own time to grow so why you know i think the same about uh, money uh, that's the only you know thought i can share from our experience that money takes time to grow and that's through investing and not to trade okay and you know we have uh, this uh, uh, greed or it's not a greed we have that uh, uh, you know one clear wish that uh, want to generate income extra income and uh, then uh, for everyone's uh, you know you know desire or a surprise there are a lot of news around uh, income from trading you you uh, you keep 10000 rupees you earn 3000 rupees per month uh, it, it's a, there are a lot of advertisement as like you know kind of going so uh, you know in terms of your view you clearly defined it but uh, uh, what is what is the real possibility of creating income from stock market you know clearly uh, income generation uh, from trading has a high probability of income lost in trading also because finally you know it's it's, it's in a way it's a zero sum game somebody makes money somebody loses money investing is different investing is where you actually allowing the companies to grow first mm-hmm. you invest today the company is anyway running on its own trajectory it grows in size and scale higher revenue higher profits and the market cap creation and by default you create well in trading what you are saying you not you basically trading on your own without in a way worrying too much about whether the comfort company is doing on a daily or a weekly or a quarterly basis and i think that's the difference uh you can create a wealth is is a basic mantra by investing uh by trading honestly beyond a point uh, uh the quality of awareness information about companies about economy about sectors i don't really think too many people will apply those principles in while they are trading uh they because if you are trading honestly you're not supposed to take a view beyond next 1 2 3 months right uh, i mean i'm defining trading as something which is actually cash but unfortunately uh, way we've learned uh, in last uh, 24 months there are so many people who decided to you know trade through leverage uh, which is uh, derivatives which is futures and options and you know on those markets honestly uh, if somebody is doing a derivative trading his long term is actually is defined more as four weeks you know? as four weeks means he is willing to hold the contract for next expiry so so we, that that's a trading uh, so long term in trading honestly is very different from long term in investing and that's where the wealth creation happens there and honestly as you said clearly your aspiration itself is income generation in trading and i i personally don't see that that can be a base uh, the basics of wealth creation is that you have your own income profile from that income profile you save some money and that money goes as a investment in equity markets for wealth creation but if somebody is thinking exactly reverse that i'll use the equity market to create the income uh, honestly uh, i found it very difficult or maybe let's not get colored by that segment of 1% of people who might have done it let's worry about the remaining 99 okay okay thank you sir and uh, you you spoke about uh, equity uh, wealth creation so for example if a person is uh, trying to thinking uh, to open a demat uh, by himself and uh, try to pick stocks so uh, what is your advice that uh, at least minimum um, you in case if you are buying your stock uh, what are the minimum uh, few criteria which someone has to look at before picking a stock i i think the basic criteria is simple one is to do the hard work of knowing what you are doing which actually means that uh, look at any profession whether it's a, a doctor or an engineer or a lawyer you need to be trained okay you need not only education and you also need a some sort of entrepreneurship up now you need some sort of uh, working knowledge you have to work as apprentice for some time you learn on the job and then you actually start practicing as a lawyer or as a doctor or as a chartered accountant i think same principle unfortunately not too many people are able to apply to stock markets uh, they all think that i can know everything about it uh, the problem is uh, they will know only things about price okay, today morning this was the price and today evening this was the price they just don't know why the price moves they don't know what the company does i mean you have enough instances of people able to trade uh, without even knowing what the company does i think that's the real advice you know if you getting into this as a investment business there are processes by which you pick up your educational qualifications 
uh, you have to work in some sort of a research mindset you have to be a fund manager and then you know decide to move into uh, trading on a personal basis etc uh, you simply cannot you know uh, put uh, other people's advice as your primary force uh, to decide your investment pattern because finally it's your money it's not the money of that other person who's giving you advice uh, you really don't know what's the underlying intent or ability of the person uh, your money better you put efforts better you you know go through that uh, learning curve and that's as i said uh, please invest don't go don't make it waste okay and you know there are there are a lot of uh, students uh, and uh, there are a lot of youngsters they they call us and they say that uh, you know what is the training which uh, i want to take uh, to start investing by uh, you know myself and uh, we tell that you know what uh, i always tell that you know what what's the kind of uh, money you have uh, probably they may have 10000 rupees uh, then i said that uh, okay 5000 rupees can you do sip okay, mutual fund and make it to 5 lakh or 10 lakh rupees then you think about uh, investing by yourself uh, so <laughs> so but, but uh, you know what's your uh, you know take on um, a new person who is uh, just started earning some money and how he should start uh, investing you know i think uh, uh, first thing is you know it's very difficult to uh, to believe that one can get into a trading class and get trained on how to trade in markets if it was so easy then why will the person decide to train you he will be doing only market trading himself why will i you know uh, spend time teaching and getting fees out of it might as well as do so i think that's it's very tough uh, one should not fall you know a uh, prey for it uh trading in my view is you know uh can be a aim of a professional after going through the 5 10 20 years of learning curve on analyzing companies doing research on economies on on companies sectors managing money uh when you do wealth creation over 2 3 5 years only after that one should start thinking about shortening the time frame of uh, three years into maybe three months or six months but uh, unless you go through the first route you simply there is there is honestly no shortcut in in financial markets uh, apart from saying that i lose my money if i really want a shortcut okay i think um, when we when we speak about a mutual fund as a as a as a, as a product uh, how do you define a mutual fund you see we have a lot of definition about mutual fund but i always love to ask this question to fund managers and take your view what's fund man what is a mutual fund in maybe 30 seconds yeah so i think 30 seconds answer is mutual fund sahi hai <laughs> uh conceptually it's it's a team of professionals uh, who are managing your money on your behalf uh, with their own fiduciary relationship internal processes in place and trying to you know find uh, good or the best investment opportunities for your money uh, and clearly the focus is on because there is a fiduciary relationship of other people's money being managed uh, the effort is clearly on a, on a compliance and risk control in over and above the the sheer wealth creation uh, i think that's how you know i'll possibly define the mutual fund but yeah mutual fund sahi hai is perhaps the best answer okay okay uh, so i think the, the, the clearly that uh, mutual fund is a very regulated business and uh, chances of uh, misusing money is uh, not there only risk we have is that market goes up and down so we need to have that uh, uh, time and patience and ability to see that uh, kind of appreciation uh, okay so sir uh, when when you uh, in in your company uh, mahindra mahindra is uh, when you uh, manage others money uh, what are the minimum uh, you know checks which you do uh, to bring those stocks into your a uh, particular universe i'm sure that you will have a specific universe uh, you won't really look for all 5000 companies so, so yeah what is that really uh, there, there are cutoffs uh, which we arrive at from the companies which are listed so the way we analyze companies is you know basically four variables so uh, one is growth uh, what is the invest where is the growth potential for this particular company where the growth will come from will it come by new products being launched will it come by profits you know by you know pricing power being exercised by the companies etc uh, second is the cash flow uh, they finally is this company actually making cash and uh, instead of just reporting profits is it generating cash for itself you know there are a lot of companies where 
uh, accounting profit is very different from cash profit. So the second part is cash flow. Ideal world, you want a company which is able to generate cash and use that cash to invest in the growth. So they need not come to shareholder ever for raising money. So that's you know growth and cash flow interlinkage. Uh, third variable we analyze companies is management. Uh, every company has a team of professional leading it. Uh, there are owner driven companies, there are professionally owned companies, any combination. So we analyze management actions. We analyze how they have behaved over time to various you know actions of theirs to create not only the wealth but even the fiduciary. The same fiduciary principle works for them. Uh, they are also managing other people's money finally while they run the company. And fourth is the necessary the valuation. Uh, one thing which we all have learned uh, the easy way or the hard way is that finally markets you know uh, they respect valuations. There might be aberrations of you know one month, three months, six months period, but conceptually markets do respect valuations. Valuations prevail over a lot of other variables. Uh, so from Mahindra Manual Life perspective, we have this you know nice metric of growth, cash flow, management, valuation. Internally, we call it GCMB uh, framework, uh, which basically uses to analyze all those companies which are listed on, on exchange. Uh, you're right, uh, we can't cover all 3,000, 4,000 companies. On an average, I think we'll, we'll have something like, you know, top 500, maybe next 200 more uh, kind of companies in the primary universe to evaluate and then keep on adding as and when, you know, new companies uh, do to come up. Okay. So once you, once you select a company, uh, what is the chance that um, you, you you will get out of that company? Uh, for example, how do you, in case if things are not going well, uh, what are the major reasons you, you take out uh, that company from your life? Nice. No, so clearly the, the best way to get out of a company is after making your money. No? Yeah. So that, that's the best, best thing. You bought a company for a reason, you identified what can happen to this company in terms of, you know, future growth potential or the cash flow or the valuation comforts. And then you decide, okay, I've invested. Uh, uh, honestly, like in any other journey, investment either is also a journey with a destination. When you start a journey, nobody really wants to buy a company only always for uh, 10 times or 20 times in the next 10 years or so. You start with next 12, 18, 24 month time frame. Uh, that's my first destination. How does this company do well over next one or two years is the first feature. And as we've learned uh, from markets, that markets do end up giving you opportunities for uh, making your money while, you know, uh, sometimes the expected earning growth happens much faster in economy and stock price appreciates much faster. Uh, so that's where you take a call on valuation saying, okay, I was expecting something, uh, but I got much better quality returns. This is why the valuations have run up higher. Uh, so one reason to reduce position or exit is really valuation. Other reason to say is, okay, I found some alternate uh, opportunity to invest because let's remember the money with the mutual fund manager is constant. It's finally under rupee or hundred percent of portfolio. So if, if we find an attractive investment opportunity, something else, that's another reason to actually sell. And third can be what you highlighted saying that, yes, uh, there might be times where the investment opportunity identified on day one uh, may not you know exactly play out because at times, you know, things change. Uh, in the environment at times, there might be some regulatory policy change at times, there may be you no know, macroeconomic conditions which worsen and your original hypothesis of investment uh, may not play out or you realize that, okay, it will play out, but it might take slightly longer than what ideally you want. And that's a other reason to, you know, really uh, review your position and, you know, take some uh, position out of the stock. Okay, okay, okay. And, and when you, when, I'm sure that you, you will be working closely on uh, how to pick the stock and everything. Do you have any any uh, risk management team uh, trying to see that whatever you're coming up with, these are the risks I'm seeing uh, in that company? Like kind of a, a counter uh, questioning that uh, your, your assessment. Uh, yes and no. Uh, so basically there are two risks. Uh, one is the investment risk, uh, which uh, honestly the investment team is far more equipped to handle in terms of how we evaluate uh, there is the market risk, and which is where the, the the risk team starts helping us out. Because you know, for every company which you are able to buy, you also need a way that is it liquid enough to be there. As how much percentage of portfolio you should be owning this company from a risk angle. So as you know, one is the investment risk, which uh, I think equity team or the investment team is more equipped to handle. But the market risk side, clearly, the risk management team helps. Okay, okay. I mean, we don't want to be stuck in a company with five, six percent weight in a portfolio. 
Yeah. If the market liquidity etc is not you know uh, comfortable. Okay. So uh, for example, you, you bought a company and uh, it, it it start raising, and uh, from your portfolio there is a chance that uh, this this uh, this one stock will end up taking the larger share in that. So uh, how do you keep on reducing it or you keep it uh, for a longer time because the view about that particular stock is good? Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, this is a sweet problem to have. You do well and, you know, the stock appreciates and the value keeps on going up. Uh, but someday again, the, you know, the risk management starts, you know, because if you keep on having a higher weight in the company at higher price, you know, the portfolio is exposed to far more risk. So, so we have learned, you know, that... Uh, Excess of profits at some stage, you need to capitalize, you need to take the profits and then be happy with the remaining portion of investment that also makes money. And obviously, uh, that's where you start to identify the next set of stocks for making more money. Okay. Very good. And, and uh, when, when, we, when we speak about the particular fund, a focused uh, uh, equity fund, um, uh, uh, can you just define uh, uh, you know, what is a fund and uh, how do you manage in this particular fund? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so focus fund, luckily, the name itself is focus. So, you know, no need to explain that in detail. But clearly, the idea is that uh, this will be the core ideas uh, which one likes as a fund manager to invest in, in the market at this point of time. Uh, luckily, from a regulatory perspective, focus is defined as a company with uh, some particular uh, fund with little bit of a constraint on the maximum number of stocks which can be bought. Uh, so in our case, uh, Mahindra and I focused uh, fund really as a you know, limitation of we cannot exit 30 stocks at any point of time. Uh, so maximum 30 companies at any point of time we like and we will own in the portfolio. That's the first thing. And within that, uh, uh, you know, the basic process of yes, clearly uh, the GCMB framework to identify stocks, portfolio construction to ensure the liquidity kind of criteria are met. So risk management of the portfolio at stock level sector level uh, does get you know uh, play out but yeah clearly uh, the focus name 30 names you know suggest that yeah that's something where we believe perhaps at this point of time are the uh, the best uh, companies to invest in in the market after even evaluating item for uh, valuation because that's very important it can't be only the best companies it should be a best company where valuation are attractive enough for you to actually uh, be there and yeah uh, in focus kind of approach where uh, you know, you always are on the lookout for a next best idea also to be accommodated at some stage. Your, your investment time horizon is slightly more uh, aimed towards generating returns in 12 to 18 months period. Oh, okay. uh, because uh, you may not be able to buy every stock for three years in a focus kind of atmosphere because uh, the number of stocks somewhere comes in as a, as a variable. Okay. If it's a slightly wider mandate, yeah, you can keep on adding more stocks. But uh, in a 30 stock uh, mandate, uh, you'd like to keep an eye for that, you know, that so-called uh, short term of 12 to 18 months uh, in, in market language, which is, you know, actually good period because uh, that's the place in real life we have a visibility. Uh, based on today's economic environment, uh, we can analyze what may happen in the next 12 to 18 months is something in our current capability to understand and you know by default implement in the portfolio okay so uh, how do you differ, differentiate this from uh, flexi cap yeah flexi cap in terms of number anything else apart from um, numbers you you differentiate uh, focused and flexi cap yeah so i think uh, focus and flexi cap you're right uh, conceptually the first difference is, uh, is the number of stocks uh, second part is if I look at it either from a benchmark angle, they both are pretty similar. Uh, maybe flexi cap uh, can have a wider number of stock, but that's why average weight per stock can be lower. But in a in a focus fund, you'll have a far more situation where you have a what I say maximum weight per stock will be higher than flexi. Uh, it's a diversified fund mandate, but with a concentrated uh, behavior. You know? No, okay. uh, that's how focus uh, goes there. So when we look at uh, focus fund, since we have a number of shops is less, is it your focus is mainly on large cap or uh, how is that? Uh, yeah, again, uh, focus fund uh, by mandate clearly is a flexi cap equivalent. Uh, we are allowed to go anything between large, mid and small. Uh, from our perspective, what we are uh, managing till now is saying that uh, we would not like to maintain own more than two and a half percent in any individual small caps. 
So if I do a reverse calculation uh, in assuming every stock is small cap, I'll end up with a number of 75% invested and not more, uh, which is not the idea. Uh, so I'll basically say a focus fund in our case will typically have around 60% plus in large cap. And the remaining 40 will be a, a combination of you know, mid and small. Yeah, at times 60 plus means, you know, if markets are offering better value for large caps, markets, you know, have a better opportunity for small large cap to do well, we might go to 80% also. Mm -hmm. uh, but on an average, expect a minimum 60% that gives the stability, that gives, you know, the best, some of the best companies in the space. If you look at any sector today, right, uh, the largest companies will typically be a large cap. And perhaps one of the most stable from a business model perspective, from a you know historical uh, data point on business uh, wealth creation, etc. So I think that's where the focus gives the idea that I have sixty percent in large cap as a some sort of a minimum. Uh, yeah, these numbers actually can vary. There is no uh, based on market environment, but that's the current intent in place. Okay, okay. And when when we when uh, a, a normal person comes to uh, invest, uh, for example, a person is coming and uh, saying that. Uh, uh, I want to invest uh, 5,000 rupees per month uh, on an SIP. So, uh, you know, are we, uh, should we look for this kind of fund, focused fund, or uh, what will be your uh, recommendation for a person who knew and for 5,000 rupees? Oh, clearly, uh, I think uh, focus fund is a, is a nice way of uh, starting the investment also, because where what you're saying is a fund manager also is, actually, you know, in a way forced to look at the 30 best ideas rather than, you know, worrying his time over more. So I think uh, that way, uh, even for a client who wants to do SIP or for a, you know, a lump sum, I think focus as a, as a investment style is pretty much there. The only, only thing one has to appreciate really is that uh, being a focus fund, you may have a situation of, uh, the, you know, the, the time volatility can be higher because of lesser number of stocks, sometimes volatility can be higher. And the answer there is that if you have a volatility in the nature, uh, just investor has to be ready for a slightly longer time horizon. To my mind, I think something like a three-year time horizon uh, for any investor uh, is, a, is a minimum number and a pretty reasonably good way of diversifying the volatility in a sense that if you have a slightly longer time period, the same data point of volatility might look pretty small on a, on a longer perspective. As they say, time heals everything. You know, so. If you give a longer time, I think you know, that heal is part of the solution. Okay. okay. Uh, you know, for example, a person is uh, coming to invest in, in a mutual fund as a new customer, and he don't know, know much of. Uh, he know that it's a risky. He only know that uh, stock market is subject to market risk, but he don't know anything else. Uh, in, in in that case, um, uh, you know, how do we kind of uh, help him to enter into a uh, mutual fund space? Uh, what's the kind of advice for him? You know, clearly, I think uh, as long as they're aware of that fact that market risk means the stock prices can fluctuate, and which creates a up and down in the NAV. And that a fluctuation in stock price can be negated by two things in, in a mutual fund context. One is that uh, because you believe you are entrusting your money to a professional, uh, to a reputed firm, uh, they'll be able to take care of those market vagaries in terms of economy, etc. And the, the real, you know, macro risk of markets doing well or not well is actually taken out by the time factor. So if you have the time on your side and, you know, your ability to identify a good uh, set of professionals, good set of, you know, sponsors of a mutual fund and the fund manager as a professional, I think those two things, you know, are actually taken, uh, taken care of uh, by itself. Uh, and that market risk is part of your wealth creation journey. Uh, nobody is able to create wealth uh, without going through the market uh, patterns and and you know uh, history has shown us that some of the best time for generating wealth has been the time when one has invested in those actually so called risky time frame so uh, the best advice is that uh, keep more time and uh, then go with a specialized yeah, yeah. think think of it as clearly as you know planting a tree and getting a fruit out of it so if you start thinking that investment is nothing but I have planted a tree, uh, I keep on adding those, you know, water or fertilizer at a regular interval for it to grow. And then at some point of time, the, the tree starts bearing fruits. And that's that's what you know, the wealth creation is all about. Okay, okay, okay. That's, you know, that's in a combination of lump sum and sip. 
you just you just don't do only one time plant seeding and just wait right you have to keep on nurturing it on a short frequency that's nothing but sip you keep on adding more money so that you know, the wealth creation possibly is far better with that okay. averaging out okay thank you thank you uh, thank you so much i think uh, it's a great honor to uh, uh, listen to uh, a fund manager and know that uh, how uh, we can utilize mutual fund as a category and uh, help us to create our wealth uh, what's your uh, final advice to uh, our audience in terms of uh, how to save and invest and create wealth? Yeah, honestly, I know one, one one clear suggestion to all your you know audience and maybe far many is that uh, if you really want you know an option of a good future for yourself, please stop trading in future and options. <laughs> Start investing into equities as an asset class. Start investing for creating wealth uh, futures and options are perhaps you know pretty harmful to wealth creation process uh, they are just you know uh, honestly allowing you that short term thrill uh, so that's one part uh, second is yes india is on a clearly on a growth path we are economy uh, we are maybe number 6 in the world number 5th in the world or 7th in the world depending on which year you take but all of us know we are growth path is clear we likely to be number three in the next three, five, seven years journey of economy. Uh, and we've seen, let's not forget, uh, Nifty was, you know, something like 4,000 points in uh, December 06. Uh, today, maybe we are somewhere around 17,000 in uh, March 23. Uh, we know uh, economy was something like 14th rank in 2006, December. Right now, maybe we are number six or number fifth kind of rank. Uh, so we know the journey. If economy grows, markets do go up. Wealth creation is always on the card when economy is doing well. So follow the economy by investing uh, money in equity markets. Uh, don't trade, and that's not a great thing for futures uh, for your future. But yeah, investing is great. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, thank you, sir, for taking time out uh, for us. And you know, personally. Uh, learned uh, a lot and uh, it's it's always nice to uh, speak to a fund manager and understand your view and this give us a lot of confidence and I'm sure that uh, this will happen for our audience also uh, especially those who are thinking uh, to start or not or how much to invest is it the right time to invest I think uh, you know for all of them uh, this talk will be a much much useful Thank you so much for taking time out for this. Well, thanks and uh, happy investing, everyone. Yeah. Bye. Bye.